This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. While fighting the Japanese during World War II, the Americans believed that their enemies had skillful martial arts expertise and guarded cultural secrets in their fighting style. The military then sought help from several martial artists, such as boxers, wrestlers, and even knife fighters, to teach hand-to-hand -hand combat to American soldiers. Still, there was one eccentric personality that stood out among them, Francois Delescu. Both a piercing intellectual and a fierce warrior, Delescu's mentality changed the way soldiers trained in the U.S. He once wrote, quote, Our enemies have been toughened, seasoned, and experienced to jungle fighting for a long time. They've been preparing for war. We've been enjoying a utopian peace of mind. The French learned this too late. The Pacific Theater saw some of the most brutal, up-close, and personal combat of World War II. America would battle its way to victory, island to island, by molding the toughest and grittiest soldiers in history. Adaptation was key. And now you can learn more about some of the other most influential and iconic fighting force innovations in the series Top 10 Warfare from Magellan TV. Visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs or click on the link in the description below. Search and stream Top 10 Warfare Fighting Forces to see how military units rank in modern history. Magellan TV is offering Dark Docs viewers an exclusive offer, 30% off an annual membership. That's less than $3.50 per month for access to more than 3,000 documentaries across all of your devices with new programs added on a weekly basis. The offer is available to returning members too, so there's no better time to return to Magellan TV if your membership has lapsed. Support Dark Docs and visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs or click on the link in the description below. Learning the ropes. Milton Francois Elescu was born in New York to a French businessman and a Romanian mother on November 10, 1895. His younger brother, Edward, became a famous Hollywood songwriter who later portrayed the young Francois as, quote, an introverted, buck-toothed loner. While working at a public library in Harlem, Francois was beaten up and returned home with torn clothes and a bleeding forehead. The incident would affect him immensely. Francois then signed up for a cross-country race at DeWitt Clinton High School and, to everybody's surprise, finished first. He would then join the Savage School for Physical Education and began forging an entirely different persona, even growing apart from his family. His transformation went as far as adding a D to his last name in true French nobility fashion. The young man graduated in 1917 and was a high school football coach until joining the U.S. Army. His brother would later recall seeing him at a military parade, quote, marching as though the war depended upon him alone. Though he didn't fight during World War I, Francois supervised sporting activities at Fort Gordon in Georgia. When the war ended, he returned to studying and got a bachelor's degree in education and a master's in sociology at the University of Pennsylvania, then another master's in science from Columbia University, and finally a doctorate from New York University. While Delescu continued his coaching duties at several collegiate sports, he also had a side career as a radio personality, hosting daily exercise programs. Once, he almost lost his life while attempting to host an episode from the bottom of the ocean. One of his weighted shoes came off, and the current nearly dragged him away. He recounted that, quote, When I came up, I found out that everybody thought I was dead. It seemed that the main tube from the microphone broke, and I was there talking away, and all that came out for the broadcast was glug, 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 glug. In the late 1920s, Francois moved to Honolulu, where he managed the Olympic swim team that included star swimmer Johnny Weissmuller. He then traveled to Tokyo along with the swim team and was invited to judo exhibitions. He gave a demonstration of Western wrestling techniques and then asked the head of the school to teach him some of the most complicated holds in return. The teacher then taught him many tricks that he would pass on to American soldiers for over a decade. Fighting Techniques Delesky was over 40 when World War II broke out but he rejoined the military to train elite army rangers in Fort Meade, Maryland. Francois was 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighed 136 pounds, and thus became known as the Little Professor. He also had a shiny, balding head, an intense gaze, swift gestures, and a brawny constitution. His favorite weapon was an innocuous 6-foot-long sash cord, which became a lethal object in his hands. Francois would develop over two dozen techniques for strangulation, and predicted that a cord like his own 
would one day be part of the soldier's standard equipment. One of his standard moves was to kick the enemy on the belly and quickly tie the cord around his knees while he was on the ground, then loop the rest to his neck and leave the subject to strangle himself. The process could even be sped up by sitting on the enemy's face and pushing his knees forward. According to Elliskew, there were no rules and no clean fighting in actual combat. He wrote, quote, Our attitude and personal feelings in regards to sportsmanship and fair play must be changed. Strangling and killing are remote from our American teachings, but not to our enemies. Most Americans had probably never known of this type of fighting. R.P. Harris, a columnist for the Baltimore Evening Sun, stated, quote, Most of us still think of the American soldier as a two-fisted man who wouldn't think of hitting below the belt much less letting fly a kick to the crotch. Delescu also created an extreme fitness program. He pondered that, quote, Our soft, luxurious living has undermined our physical powers, and we are now realizing more than ever the need for more vigorous training in order to carry on the responsibility of command and leading men into battle. Every day, his students had to run for two miles and cross a 600-yard obstacle course that included a challenging 15-foot deep trap with smooth sides, the professor could claim that, quote, if they can't get out, let him stay there. Delisky would be known to step on his trainee's abdomen to boost fortitude. There were also uncensored confrontations and bare-knuckled boxing, and an exercise that required the soldiers to crouch and fight from that position. And although Delisky liked boxing, he was skeptical about its use on the battlefield. Instead, he prompted his students to use a range of unorthodox tactics to disable the enemy, quote, Swing your right elbow like this to crush his windpipe. Slap him with your other hand, then follow through with the knee or abdomen. In 1943, Delisky was sent to Hawaii, where he opened another school that was presumably more grueling than the one in Fort Meade and would prepare the soldiers for the jungles of the Pacific. The secret training site's location was never disclosed, but it was somewhere in the mountains. The school consisted of a three-mile course through the hillsides, water hazards for navigation maneuvers, walls to climb, and a greased metal slide to run up before crawling for another half mile. To make the scene more realistic, the teacher would employ actual flamethrowers and similar hazards, quote, fire and gas are a little unorthodox, but then so is war. During other exercises, the teams had to repeatedly lift a thousand pound log through a steep hill and engage in fighting drills immediately after. The students learned to bury explosives and use real guns with live ammunition while in training. During the first months, there were injuries in the thousands, but Delescu argued that, quote, better to have a few men hurt now than to have them killed needlessly later. R.P. Harris questioned Delescu's techniques by pointing out that he was far superior in speed, skill, aptitude, and coordination. But the little professor didn't excuse himself. He claimed that, quote, I went through every test with the men, never asking them to do a thing I wouldn't or couldn't do. Legacy Delisky would briefly put his techniques to the test during real combat in the Gilbert Islands in November 1943. When he and his men were pinned down by Japanese snipers, Delisky fired at one of them up in a tree. The enemy then fell to the ground and Delescu swiftly disarmed and finished him in a blink. He would later receive a silver star for his heroic actions. Delescu returned to the U.S. half a year later and was then sent to France to organize training courses at Fontainebleau. While there, he was appointed a member of the Legion of Honor and awarded the Croix de Guerre. Delescu would go on to publish the book How to Prepare for Military Fitness and the manual Hand-to-Hand -hand Combat about his techniques and individual fighting style. He also served in Turkey during the Korean War by training the locals as part of the foreign aid program and eventually returned to the U.S. to continue his teaching at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Delisky retired from the Army in 1954 and resettled in Siesta Key, Florida with his wife, where he passed away in 1972. He would be remembered for changing the Army's mindset, and his contributions to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat would continue to be used and upgraded for decades to come. As Yank Magazine pointed out, thanks to Delisky, quote, the Rangers actually know more about judo than the average Japanese. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channels and make sure to leave us a comment letting us know about any topic you'd like to see in one of our videos. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up.